I recently made a video talking about overcrowding on the London Underground's Victoria Line, and a few people in the comments section mentioned what some other cities have done with their own subway systems, which is to build express tunnels. Why don't we have those on the London Underground? Well, that's something I'd like to talk about today. The principle goes thus. Here's an imaginary tube line. Now, your basic underground line consists of two main tunnels, one in each direction. What they do in some cities, New York, Philadelphia and Chicago off the top of my head, is to build lines with two additional tunnels. What that means is you can use one set of tunnels for fast trains that skip stations, and another to stop at every station. It also means that you don't necessarily need to close a line for maintenance, because you can take two lines out of service while running trains on the remaining lines. You can even run 24-hour services, which I understand is the case in New York. I have never been there, but I totally should one day. Anyway, that's the principle. None of this is rocket science. In fact, most UK main lines are built on this principle. So, why didn't London do it? Well, there are two answers to this question. One, it's to do with the way the network was built, and two, actually we totally did. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense, so let me explain. London is kind of cursed and blessed with the underground. The first underground railways opened in London, which means that it has one of the most extensive subway networks in the world. But because it was the first, its engineers were basically working blind. They had no way of knowing what an underground railway should be, or how it should be built, or how busy or complicated the system would wind up being. My short answer to a lot of the questions I get about the underground is, some Victorian did it that way and now we're stuck with it. So what do I mean when I say, we totally did? Well firstly, I don't literally mean we because I was born after most of the tube network was built. So really that's a bit of a weird way of saying it. But secondly, the first underground line was the Metropolitan Railway, which ran from Paddington to Farringdon and opened in 1863. The intention wasn't just to run between those stations, though. The line was to connect with a number of other surface railways, to let trains from those railways run between each other and to serve places in the city. The new railway was so successful that it quickly ran out of slots for train services, the line was extended to Moorgate in 1865, but at the same time, construction was underway on a second set of lines. These would run from King's Cross to Moorgate. They were known as the Widened Lines and opened in 1866. They weren't exactly express lines, but the principle was similar. They meant that the original tracks could be used exclusively by the Metropolitan Railway's own trains, and the other companies could use the new tracks. Part of the Widen Lines is now used by Thameslink trains, and the rest is currently abandoned, but it's not exactly hard to spot. As the 20th century began, it became clear that the underground was struggling to cope with the crowds. There had been virtually nothing by way of central planning. Rather, the tube consisted of a bunch of different railway companies trying to grab as much territory as they could, so that meant that you had situations like the one on the district line, where the western end split off into different branches, all being served off a single trunk route. That was the kind of situation where an extra set of express tunnels would have been perfect, and indeed that's what they planned to do. A deep-level express line from Mansion House to South Kensington. Work actually began on constructing this, in fact. However, there was a complicating factor. A number of rival schemes were underway that would compete with the district. Well, what happened in the first couple of years of the 20th century was that the district's owner, Charles Yerkes, began a process of wheeler dealing to either take the rivals over or force them out of the game. Having done that, the tube lines he acquired were combined with the district deep level to form the Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway. You'd know it as the Piccadilly Line, and it opened in 1906. In 1932, it would take over some of the district services to Uxbridge and Hounslow. In the west, additional tracks would be built to carry the new Piccadilly Line services. Piccadilly Line trains would pass through District Line stations, but not necessarily stop there. And this was kind of how the Underground dealt with the concept of express tubes. 
Rather than just add additional tracks to existing lines, they'd build new lines that could kill two birds with one stone. The Piccadilly line partially fulfilled the function of an express line to the district, but it would also serve places like Leicester Square, Hoban, King's Cross and Finsbury Park. In 1939, the Bakerloo line took over the Metropolitan line Stanmore branch. To get there, a new tunnel was dug with two new stations, St John's Wood and Swiss Cottage. These replaced the Metropolitan line's Swiss Cottage, Lords and Marlborough Road stations, which were closed, and meant that the Metropolitan kind of became the express line for the Bakerloo, for part of its length anyway. In 1979, the Stanmore branch was taken over by the Jubilee Line, just to make things even more complicated. In a sense, the Victoria Line is an express line for the Circle Line. One of the main ideas behind it was that it would enable people to rapidly cross London from north to south without having to go all the way around the Circle. It's not technically an underground line, no matter how much people argue about it, but the Elizabeth Line functions as an express line for the Jubilee, Central, Metropolitan, Circle and Hammersmith and City Lines, plus the DLR. Alright, but isn't all this cheating? I mean, they function as express lines in a sense, sure, but they aren't express lines in the sense of New York or Chicago. All that being said, London nearly did get true American-style express tube lines. London Underground and its predecessors were well aware of what was going on in America. The tube is a very American-influenced system, thanks to a lot of it being built with American money. As early as 1905, the Royal Commission on London Traffic suggested that lines should be built with stopping and express tunnels, but of course nothing came of this. In 1935, a proposal was published for two express tube lines to be built below the Northern Line, which back then was called the Morden Edgware Line, but that's another story. One set of tunnels would run from Kentish Town to Waterloo, with a possible branch off to Chalk Farm and another to Finsbury Park. The other would have run from Kennington to Balham. The line at this time was very overcrowded, and there were plans to extend it north hence the connection to Finsbury Park. This got so far that work was actually begun on stations, which were used as deep-level air raid shelters during the Second World War. In 1946, the County of London Plan Working Party proposed a reworked version of this, with the express tubes running from Golders Green to Waterloo and Kennington to Tooting Broadway. These plans were subsequently abandoned due to a combination of being superseded by other projects and a general lack of money. A similar proposal was put forward for the Central Line. This seems to have been abandoned much sooner, but deep-level shelters were proposed for Chancery Lane, St Paul's and Liverpool Street. Oh, and or Bethnal Green. The references I have are sort of ambiguous about that. Only the Chancery Lane shelter was actually built, following objections by the authorities at St Paul's Cathedral to digging in their vicinity. The scheme would be reworked and reworked, and eventually would see the light of day as the Elizabeth Line. I think ultimately, aside from the cost and the difficulty of working around existing infrastructure, express tube lines just aren't culturally a very London thing. We keep getting close to something that looks like an express tube line, and then we just sort of pull back. You might say, London Underground likes to pull a fast one. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this speedy tale from the tube. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like as ever to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon and here on YouTube for your generous support. You are the express to my expression. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.